Now we will study cubital fossa, the important topic in anatomy, the cubital fossa. You know the cubital fossa, right? Yeah. This is our cubital fo fossa, okay, where you take IV injection, okay, this is our cubital fossa. Okay, now we need to see how the cubital fo fossa is formed. Okay. Cubital fossa. Okay. You know, this is our humerus end. See, imagine this has our this side we will have radius bone, this side we will have ulnar. The radius bone is here on the lateral side. This is ulnar, okay. This is our humerus, this having the lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle, okay. Now, the muscle here which is known as the brachioradialis muscle, okay. The brachioradialis. And on the ulnar side, we have pronator terrace. Okay, we studied in the superficial compartment, right? Pronator terrace. And the brachioradialis, you remember? The brachioradialis we studied in the extensor compartment. Okay, the brachioradialis muscle here, the pronator terrace. See, the, this muscle is having medial and lateral side, right? The side which is closer to this cubital fossa is medial, and other is lateral. Okay, so here the medial medial part of brachioradialis is participating and here the pronator terrace we are having medial and lateral side right okay, okay. so this is the medial side of pronator medial part that is towards the body this is the medial part the lateral part is here okay so the lateral part of pronator terrace is also participating and the imaginary line you can see the upper the imaginary line which connects two epicondyles the lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle of humerus. So these structures form a fossa here. Okay, a space here it is known as the cubital fossa. Okay, first here we, we need to know the bound the correct boundaries. That is lateral bodies by lateral body lateral border. Okay, lateral part is by medial part of brachioradialis okay the lateral border right the medial border is by medial border is means the border which is closest to the body so here we are having pronator terrace pronator terrace is having medial is towards us and the lateral part is here so the, the lateral part the lateral part is here okay the lateral part of the lateral part of Pronator terrace and the superior border is by the imaginary line, imaginary line connecting two epicondyles. Okay. So in this way, cubital fossa is formed. Okay. Now, what are the content inside cubital fossa? What all structures are present inside cubital fossa? We'll study that. So we have a mnemonics to study that one. Condens. Okay. Condens. That is just remember matter. M A T R. So matter is inside our cubital fossa okay here m is for m is for the median nerve okay a is for artery the brachial artery brachial artery it can be two right it can be ulnar and radial ulnar artery and radial artery and t here is for tendon of biceps and R is for radial nerve okay okay so this structure is from the medial to the lateral side so medial means the closer to the body so in medial part we have what the median nerve okay then we have brachial artery the tendon of biceps radial nerve so in MCQ they will give like brachial artery lies 
medial to the tendon of biceps and cubital fossa right mm -hmm. brachial artery lies medial to the tendon of biceps so that statement is correct okay so sometimes they will give you lateral this is not lateral because this is from medial to the lateral side okay medial to lateral Me medially we have median nerve then the brachial artery that is ulnar or radial then tendon of biceps and radial nerve so remember matter so these are the boundaries formed forming the cubital fossa and these are the contents inside cubital fossa clear so it is very important the contents and the boundaries they are asked in mcqs okay now now we will study I'm adding some more steps here, okay, as we have the figure here. You remember the carpal bones I talked in first video, we have scaphoid, lunatum, trichotrum and pisiforme and try to catch her, okay, trapezium, trapezioidium, capitate and hematum, okay. So first is in the proximal row we have scaphoid and pisiform in proximal and tra trapezium and hamate okay this pisiform and hamate they are connected okay this pisiform and hamate they are connected and they form flexor retinaculum and many structures pass through this so they will form a important Thing that is known as carpal tunnel. Okay, the flexus retinaculum that is pisiform, the hamate, the medial side, the distal bone of second row of carpal bones and pisiform bone. Okay, proximal row they will form this flexor reticulum. They will form the carpal tunnel. Okay, now we will study deeply about carpal tunnel. Before that, we have to know the structures related to the smallest bone that is the pisiform bone structures related to the pisiform bone or the attachments or the attachments of pisiform bone let me see this one marker what are the structures attached to the Pisiform bone. Okay. So these are MCQ. Okay, you will get MCQ. Okay. So there will be FCU flexor carpi ulnaris will be attached to the pisiform bone. First one. FCU is flexor carpi ulnaris. Okay. Then attachment of piso pisiform hamate ligament. Okay. This is inserted or attached means just inserted. FCU inserted to the pisiform bone. Okay. Then there will be ligament. Ham pisiform hamate ligament. Pisiform hamate ligament. Then we have flexor retinaculum that I have told you here. This one, the flexor retinaculum. Flexor retinaculum. And the last one, extensor retinaculum. Okay. If there is flexor, there will be definitely extensor also, right? The so flexor and extensor retinaculum. Okay. So we studied cubital fossa. Then the pisiform bone is the smallest bone, right? So the attachments of pisiform bone, something are attached. FCU means flexor carpi ulnaris. As pisiform means the ulnar side. So FCU will be attached, inserted in the pisiform bone. Then pisiform hamate ligament, the ligament connecting pisiform and hamate, and the flexor retinaculum and the extensor retinaculum. So this this thing you need to know. Just I just added this stuff here because we have the figure here. You know radius. We have scaphoid bone. In the ulnar side we have pisiform. Clear? Yeah. Now we will deeply study the carpal tunnel. Okay, there is a syndrome known as carpal tunnel syndrome. Before that, we have to know what are the structure passing over carpal tunnel and passing through carpal tunnel. Okay.